Amr uh, deepest apologies for taking over half an hour to get an interview with you. But the Birmingham Youth Sports Academy, uh, Academy I've just about got that right, Birmingham Sports Academy, uh, what is your connection with it? Well, I'm the Vice Chair of Birmingham Youth Sports Academy. Uh, I came on board about three years ago. Uh, I came to see the work, what Anwar and the boys are doing. They're doing an absolutely fantastic job. I was looking to do some work with charity. Obviously, you know, we come from a charity background in terms of our family. And I became involved with them three years ago. Best decision I ever made. That, 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 that was a very wise move to get an entrepreneur like you on board. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, um, you know, I hope they don't mind me saying that. The as I um, jestingly say that the, the Great Patans are running it, it, it is a diverse uh, youth organization. Absolutely. You know, we're from the inner city kids. You've got like a lot of Yemeni community there. You've got a white, you've got a black. So it's a good mix of size that we've got coming in through our doors. And that's what we represent. You see, we're representing the kids. We're not aiming for a certain side to be representing the whole community as a whole. Well, you know, um, their Saturday morning uh, training session, I, I've been along to it. I grew up near Small Heath, originally Balls of Green, lived most of my life fully. So it was, uh, it, it was quite tearful to go back to Munn Street, but to see over, over nearly 200 young children of different ages in fantastically organized in organized sport. Now, we associate organized sport with grammar schools, public schools, King Edward schools but not, not in the inner cities of Birmingham. And that is a fantastic work they do, don't they? It is, and I think you know, you've got to target these deprived areas, these inner city areas, because that's where the true talent lies. You know, you've got to give every kid a chance. And to get to the inner city, teach them at grassroots level, that's where you're going to grasp most of the kids. Because a lot of these kids, you've got to understand, come from very deprived homes, come from broken homes, gang-related areas. And we want to get them off the street. Our motto, keep them safe, keep them healthy. And that's what our aim is to do, and that's what we're doing. And to, and to do it at the mass level, where there's hundreds and hundreds of your young children are taken care of, that is important. It's not about elite. It's no. taking care of the, the masses from the inner city. Absolutely. No, you've got to imagine BYSA started in 2002. Ten kids in a park. We've come a long way. 200, 250 kids. We have elite squad on Friday night. We have 200, 250 kids turning up on a Saturday. But what's more important now, we start girls football only, which is on a Sunday. So BYSA is growing. We're looking at other avenues to branch out. You know, we've got people from West Bromwich, we've got people from Leicester who want to come under our umbrella and that's how we want to grow BOIC. And also entrepreneurs like you, it's good to see fellow comrades like you who are here, I'm sure a lot of them are here because of you and, and, and dare I say your father, your great father, uh, that is important to get the business community to support these initiatives. Absolutely, I think that getting the business community is very important, you know we're all busy in our lifestyle, doing a lot of work but we believe in giving back to the community. There's no point being selfish and getting all this um, wealth and getting all this fame from everybody else. You've got to give it back and I think that's where true inspiration lies. So, um, Amo, when this program goes out, there'll be, I'm sure, many business people watching this. What would you say to them if they want to get involved with BYSA? I'll say, come on board BYSA. We have annual function every year. Become a sponsor, come to Saturday sessions. You'll see all the kids. Can they join in? You can do whatever you want. We'll cater for anything. You know, just, just, just come on a Saturday morning and have a look how these kids are being taught and you've got to come on board, you know, it's very important to support your local charity. I'm a, well, one, thank you very much, it's a well, pleasure talking well, to you well, pleasure. and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, well, well, thank, well, you. Well, thank, thank you very much. Okay, take Manish, uh, you're hosting this fantastic community initiative, BYSA, Birmingham Youth Sports Academy. How, how did these great guys get hold of you? Funnily enough, last time I was in Birmingham was for the um, Asian Business Chamber of Commerce uh, yeah. to host an awards do at the ICC. And I met so many great people that night, actually. Uh, it was a great event. I came off, sometimes you come off events thinking, not quite sure how that went. That one I really, really enjoyed. It's nice to be back in Birmingham because I've worked here for so many years. And uh, I met the guys and I got in touch with them not that long ago. And they said, well, look, we'd love you to come and host our event because clearly they must have loved what they saw last time. Yeah. Which can't have been too bad, really, could it? <laughs> no, uh, but, so here yeah. I am. But no, no, but I've looked more into what B BYSA is all about. I see so many community initiatives like this where kids are, you know, trying to be put on the right path by using sport and the good that football brings together. And it's fantastic. I mean, look, anything that can help the community can help the kids. Come on. You know, I think the more and more people, I, the older you get, you have your own kids. 
you kind of realise the potential and what football can do. And, and it doesn't get more fundamental than that, does it? Where yes. they're taking care of masses, literally hundreds and hundreds of inner city kids. You know, I mean, we associate organised sport with grammar schools, public yeah. schools, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, high end. But th these guys are touching right at the core of the edges of society. And look, listen, look, listen to this as a contrast. The fact that they've taken on tour to places like the New Camp in Barcelona, where kids even with lots of money haven't even been to. But they are taking kids whose parents can't afford one pound a week to take their kids to the initiative, hence why it's a free uh, scheme. I mean, like, you know, how good is that? It doesn't get better than that, does no, it? No, it doesn't. It's uh, amazing. But Manish, it, 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 it's great that someone like you is here supporting it because it, it famous faces like you here, it, 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 it genuinely, genuinely gives well, that cachet that the people, but also there's great entrepreneurs behind the scenes some of these great young inner city kids that I grew up with, who are now adult men, yeah. uh, are entrepreneurs, and it's great that they're wow. putting something back. Well, I mean, like, it's incredible. And look, from my perspective, um, if you have some kind of profile, it's a no-brainer. You've got to put it to some use. You know, um, something that strikes a chord personally, of course, with charities, it doesn't matter if it involves, if you're a father, if it involves kids or not, but something will always strike a chord, and this is one of them. So clearly, look, hey, listen, it's a pleasure for me to be here um, and I, I wish them success going ahead because I think what they've done for the last seven, uh, 15 years has been incredible. Well, maybe from Boom TV, I mean, it's great a, to interview, but be a pleasure that you're supporting such a grassroots organisation. As a former PE teacher, I know the difference that people like you can make. You, you might not notice it, but I can tell you that. Uh, and Manish, flipping the coins the other way, the Premiership, what a season so far. And as a Leicester born and bred person... Um, Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Well, it gets even better because I'm hosting the Player of the Year Awards next Sunday uh, at the Grosvenor. So, can you imagine? I mean, like, today's great because I love Ian Rush and I love all the other guys who are here today. Uh, it's going to be on another level where I'll be talking to Riyad Mahrez, Vardy and Kante and then Ozil and Payet. So, and what a season. I mean, like, we are seven points ahead with five games to go. It, if you told me this 12 months ago, I would literally have called the authorities and said, I'm never going to see yeah. you again. And, and also, for good reason. It's all like when Gary Lineker tweeted, he, yeah. he went, when they sat Pearson, he goes, really? Yeah. Like, he, he went, Ranieri, really? Yeah. And when Ranieri got appointed, I then tweeted, and it's now being dug out and being <laughs> retweeted, because yeah, I said it's a bit of an unimaginative appointment. There you go. See, you, you pundit. <laughs> You have to tell me with the microphone, but it shows you how much pundits think yeah. they know. Yeah, yeah. It shows you how much pundits think they know. I know, yeah. Uh, but but the, the beauty of it is, it, it generally is about opinions, and it, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful story. I, I hope there's no, there's no final twist. Mm. Uh, but in football, as we know, oh, no, for, no, no. we know from when Manchester City yeah. won it a few years hey, look, ago. We know with Liverpool. Yeah. Only with what happened with Stephen Gerrard. Yes. So yes. There could be a twist, a slip, or whatever. Yeah. I'm hoping it's not going to happen to Leicester. Well, Manish, uh, between now and the rest of the season, subject to your commitments with the BBC, it'd be great to follow you. As a Leicester boy, between now and the end of the season, see how the season unfolds. Hey, uh, you know, thank you. I can't wait to find out how it goes myself. Have a lovely minute. I'll be in touch. Nice thank you, sir. Noreen Khan, Kabir Ali, welcome to BYSA. I'm just about to get the pronunciation right. Birmingham Youth Sports Academy. Uh, and tell us, uh, this great, fantastic youth organisation. How did you guys come to know about it? Um, I found out about it about two years ago, actually, and I thought it was a great initiative, you know, helping obviously young people within sport. And then you get some great names turning up. You know, we've got Kabir Ali here today. The legend is here. <laughs> um, some footballing legends as yeah. well. So it's just a nice way of getting together and networking as well. Kabir, how do you find out about BYSA? No, I think, likewise, a couple of years ago, you get to hear different good news, good stories of them doing great stuff. I think it's always nice to go back to the community to give give back something to the youth and inspire them. I think we've got more than enough good role models. I think we need to showcase them a little bit more and, and get them out there. Well, Kabir, you're the original inner city role model. You, you made it, the Spark Hill boy made it big, right, to play test cricket. So when you see uh, an organisation like this taking care of hundreds and hundreds of inner city kids like your good self, how important is that? They're not concentrating on the elite, but concentrating on the masses. I think there's something in the water of the South, South Birmingham. I think Sparkle itself has, uh, has produced 14 to 15 first class players and two international players. I think, uh, I think hard work is the key. And uh, we were lucky when I was going through, we had Asif, Asif Dean, Nir Mirza, we had very good role models to look up. Wazim Khan. Wazim Khan, and you can name loads, but these three or four names always stood out. So we wanted to 
Alan get Sherry out? Of course, we used, to, we used to get inspired by these guys. And likewise, now that we've retired or Moin's at his peak of, the, peak of his career, we should get back and give back to the community and inspire the, 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 the youngsters coming through the ranks. Lauren, you, you interview the great and the good on a regular basis. So, How, how important is that legends like these people, Mark Walter, Cyril Regis, uh, Manish, yeah, of course. So a fellow legend like yourself, <laughs> that they're all here to support such a great organisation. Well, I think it's very important actually to support initiatives like this because you know if, if we don't turn up and if yeah. we don't support, then you know it's it don't look very good. So uh, and, and again, like Kabir said, to inspire the young people, they need to see role models in the community. Yeah. And somebody like Kabir who's come through, you know, and went on to prof play professionally, it's it's very important for youngsters to see that. Manish was saying earlier on that you know. This organisation takes these inner city kids to places like the New Camp to watch Barcelona play and the don't charge them a penny. So th there's some great work been going on behind the scenes, some great sponsors, great entrepreneurs, great business people. And dare I say, they're all probably from the same same um, backgrounds as where these kids are now. So yeah. that, th that shows a, a great success story itself. Yeah, it certainly does. And again, I think a lot of people don't even know about the BYSA. Yeah. Um, so a charity dinner like this, obviously with lots of media attention and big names turning yeah. up, just raises awareness. Do you think that makes a big impact? No, definitely. I mean, it's always nice to get um, people getting involved and helping the youngsters. Because not everybody can sport, uh, can can kind of afford sports kit. Because yeah. cricket kit itself, if you go for a nice, decent size, decent bat, and, and also it'll cost you five, six hundred pounds, then the travelling, Parents taking time off from work, taking it from A to B, has a knock-on effect, not just on that youngster, but all the rest of the family. So I think organisations like this play a big part and, and will be playing a massive part in the coming future. I'm going to flip in the other way, Noreen. Um, what the hell happened with Liverpool yesterday? <laughs> they went from like... Happened? It was brilliant. I mean, you know, it was like a miracle, unbelievable to come yeah. back from like, you know, 2-1 down to go on and win 4-3 was amazing. Happened when you watched the game? No, actually, I'd, uh, I'm not a big football fan, but what I do know is 90% of family sports Liverpool, so... Because Marine's a big Liverpool fan, isn't he? Of course, yeah, yeah. so you, you know, you can tell what he knows about cricket. But no, no, you are a die-hard Liverpool fan, so I, I, even by your die-hard standards, that was so that one, was he else. one hell of a shot. Yeah, it kind of reminded us again of Istanbul, you know, many years ago when Steven Gerrard was the captain, and we'll never forget that night, and I think yesterday again, what happened was pretty remarkable. Uh, but also... What, what, what is the future life for Liverpool? I, I'm only asking because you're a die-hard Liverpool. I, I would not normally mix all that in, but what, do you reckon Klopp is the right signing now, especially after last night? Well, and, and I, th I, I think last night just sealed it, really. I mean, we, we were ecstatic when we signed Klopp, but, yeah. you know, he's he's just doing great things for the club and he knows how to motivate the players. You know, he gives them hugs and yeah. he's just in, he's just great. It we love it. He punches his heart, yeah, beats we, out we his we chest. He, he gets the crowd going. Yeah. But uh, getting back to BYSA, and an event like this, this is like a gala, did you? I, I go to many awards at the ICC, I feel many awards, but this is fantastic. It's like a gala dinner, isn't it? No, it's brilliant, actually. The turnout's brilliant. The venue looks very nice. I think Moin should have been there. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite make it, but um, that would have been nice for the, for the event as well if Moin turned up. Unfortunately, he's gone to see James Taylor today, so uh, obviously we're yes, uh, I remember yeah. on that side as well. But I think, look, it's, it's a great turnout, looks good. Hopefully the food will be. So, so sorry to take your time out. I know, I know you've been presenting awards today, but in, um, it's been a phenomenal 24 hours. You've just come straight from the um, the, the memorial war for the '96. How was that today? Yeah, it was fantastic. I think uh, you know uh, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, it's uh, it was the final one at Anfield uh, this year, so uh, I think it's an it's amazing thing what these people have done here. It's it's something which uh, we'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's it's amazing how far they've come in 27 years. Yeah. And it's so poignant as well that, you know, uh, with the great match at Anfield yesterday, one of the greatest, I take it you were there, Ian? Yeah, I was there. I thought it was incredible. It's an incredible atmosphere. But, uh, you know, it was an incredible game, really, and that's what it's about. And uh, when you need something special, them supporters give it to you. You know, to go to nights like uh, in European nights at Anfield is something special. But last night was even more special, you know. To score three goals in the second half and to do that, it's absolutely amazing. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, uh, on the on the eve of the hills, right, you know, uh, that happens. And I think there's more than 11 players out there for Liverpool yeah, yeah. That last night. And, and, and Ian, you played in some amazing, raucous atmosphere games at Anfield. How did last night compare? Yeah, it was right up there with the best of them. You no, know, European nights is always famous and everything. But last night, even before the game, was incredible. No, when Dortmund tried to kill the game off, two goals down yeah. there, they've done it. We got ourselves back in the game. 
they tried to kill off again the third, but you can't keep them down. You can't keep these supporters down, and it's incredible. And uh, you know, even I, when it went to three one, even I was thinking, surely you can't it's do over. that now and that. But we always believe in, and uh, when you got a manager like Clough, you know, anything can happen. Uh, and to see King Kenny with almost like a tear in his eye and hugging his better half, that 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 tells you people were moved. Yeah, that's what it's and that's what we we become supporters now, even though we still work as ambassadors for the club. We come we become supporters and that's what it's all about. We've had our time playing now and we've got to try and pass on our experience and everything uh, you no know, to the players now. And that's what we've done. But uh, last night I think that cut those people on the cop. I was, they sang like I've never heard uh, talking about many, ever, ma yeah. maybe ever, like, yeah. And that's saying something. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and Ian, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's very humbling that a, a true legend like you, within 24 hours, is here in inner city Birmingham, supporting the Birmingham Youth Sports Academy. Uh, how did you come about to know them and, and end up here today? Well, it's like everything. I'm, I've learned a lot about Asian football over the last few years. I've, I've, been, I've been looking at the Indian football, but... I think more Asian football, and, and, and that's what it's and all about. And closer home here in England. Yeah, exactly, and, that, and that's what it's all about. You know, when I look and see these boys, well, I like even more when you see the girls now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's absolutely incredible, and that's what it's all about. It's not just about, they may not make professional footballers, are they, but it's getting, the, the standards getting higher and higher, and yeah. they're, keeping them, they're keeping themselves fit and healthy, yeah. and that's what it's all about. But for me, it couldn't get bigger and better. And, and Ian, how important is it that, um, like, BYSA here, that they, they're not doing it for the elite, they're doing it in the masses. The young inner city kids, you know, right from the edges of society, but they're keeping them all intact and proactively keeping them in football. So what would they be doing if they weren't, you know, and that's the thing, and that's why it's That's so, dangerous. Uh, exactly, and that's why it's so special. But I think what you've also given credit to the sponsors as well. Yes. You can't do it without the sponsors, no, no. and that's what it's all about. So I think it's great to see these sponsors giving some impacts yeah. and these kids now, they're, they can see them, they even dress beautiful and all yeah. that, and they actually, and they look, and they go, what I like about it, they walk around with smiles on their faces. Yes. And if that means, that must mean they're enjoying it. And that's what, that's what it's all about, growing up. They'll never forget it. As a kid, you never forget things, whether good or bad. Yeah. But hopefully, a lot of these things is mostly good. You, me you mentioned the girls, and um, the fact that they're on stage as well. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, with, with all this like, sad talk about terrorism, yeah. terrorism alerts in England, how, how, how wonderful is it that BYSA have got all these young kids, including girls, and, and, and they show that they're from all different parts of, especially yeah. Pakistani Muslim society, that they're just normal English people. Um, we're all the same, it right? no, doesn't matter what colour you are, we're all exactly the same. And I'd say I'd be, I've been dealing a lot in, in Wales and England about uh, no, the grassroots, that's yeah. also about. If you haven't got the grassroots right, you'll get nothing right. Sure. And it takes time to get the grassroots right. And once you start getting the grassroots right, maybe four or five years, you'll see, you'll, you'll see the effect. And that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter where you are, but I think at the end of the day, we all need it for the love of football and love of sports. And, you know, I think it's absolutely incredible what they're doing. Well, Ian, uh, just want to say a last thank you. As a former PE teacher, um, a, a sports PE teacher, it's so important that um, the, the effect that someone like you'll have on an event like this coming to inner city of Birmingham, it's, it's, a, it's a, pre a pleasure and a privilege for you to have taken time out, especially uh, since the uh, Hillsborough yeah. Memorial today, and that you ended up in the evening in Birmingham. Thank you so much, Ian. You're welcome, thank you. Have a lovely evening, all right? Thank all you. the best, Ian. Okay. Take care.